Well, hello, I'm back with another episode in my 52 things in 2023. Each week or so this year, I'm planning to create a mixed media or junk journal art piece that's inspired by one or two or more of the books that I have on my arty bookshelf. The dots that I used on the piece that I created last week made me think of this book called The Dot. This was a gift from one of my my young art students quite a few years ago. Her mom said that it rem I reminded her of the art teacher in the story. And it's a children's book, but I think it's got a good message for everyone. The little child in the story was having a hard time creating any art, so her teacher su suggested that she draw a dot, and the girl was surprised by that. But pretty soon she was creating all kinds of dotty art. And while I was thinking about that book, it reminded me that I've been working on this stitch dot piece that started out with some painted spots on this cloth and I've been adding all kinds of stitches on top. So I pulled out another book that I've actually been using quite a lot lately, the Reader's Digest Complete Guide to Needlework. And while Complete is rather a lofty title, it actually has a lot of really useful information. I've used it quite a few times over the past year. I looked up different stitch patterns when I was working on my free form knitting project, my 52 things that I did in 2022. I used it to look up bobbin lace when I was working on that project. And I decided that I'm going to take those inspirations and create something today using this watercolor paper that I have. I decided to use some of my watercolor gouache paints, which is different from acrylic gouache that I've seen for sale recently. This paint I've had for for many years. My oldest daughter is 24, and so this I had well before I was even pregnant with her, so it's over 25 years old. The colors have mainly dried up, but all I have to do is add water to them to use them again. And part of my intent in doing this project is actually to make use of the large collection of art supplies that I have. So I'm going to create those spots using my, wa uh, my gouache paint and then we'll see what happens afterwards. So all I have to do to use this paint is wet, wet the little splotches here and then it works just pretty much like watercolor paint. The way that we use the term gouache in English, it's it's essentially like a very dense, opaque watercolor paint and basically poster paint. So you'll sometimes see the word on children's children's paint sets. So it, it's very pigmented, very intense colors. Well, and you can water them down, obviously, but you can make very, very bright colors with this type of paint. So I'm going to create a series of spots on my page in various sizes using a rainbow of colors. Then I'll have to let let those spots dry. After I finish, finish painting the spots, I decided to, to paint a thin ring around the edges. I have a watercolor painting class coming up soon and this is one of the activities that I'm thinking about doing as a warm-up activity. It's a good practice to see if you can control your your paint from bleeding into each other and see what, hap we'll see what happens when it does bleed into each other. So after I finish drawing my circles with the rings around them, I got out a different set of art supplies and I used this last week as well. I got out my set of gel pens. You can la layer light colors on top of dark colors and I started making marks that were inspired by that stitched piece that I showed you. And the marks that I'm making, I'm thinking about what shape the different stitches that I use are. Chain stitches, straight stitches, French knots, things like that. Simple stitches. And I'm using those, the shapes of those stitches to guide my decisions in which, in what kind of marks I'm making here on this piece. And I'm just going around each circle, they're very imprecise and very irregular. I'm not trying to space them evenly or make them exact. And I'm working outside the circle, inside the circle, and on the line around the circle as well. And I'm 
bouncing around and picking a color and I'm looking at different places I can use it and there's no real rules sometimes I like the way that a shape's turning out in a certain color and I'll use it in a different place sometimes I think it's not working so I won't use it again and I'm just bouncing around changing colors whenever I feel like it and seeing what emerges and as I keep working the pieces get more and more detailed. They don't look like much to start with, but the more I add to them, the more interesting they become. And then keep going, just adding and adding, overlapping things. If there are things that I don't like, that I'm not particularly crazy about, I'll just make some modifications to it with another color on top. And there are some fun metallic colors that I'm using as well. Just keep adding and adding and adding. And then I thought I was done and I turned off the camera and then I decided I didn't like all that white space around the shapes. So I got out some more of my art tools that I don't use very often. These are brush pens. decided to add these into the background or the negative space. And because they didn't blend as well as I thought, I went in with some more dots because this is all about the dot after all. And I created dots that kind of blend the edges where the where the colors change from one color to another and then I turned off the camera again and then I thought hmm all of those lines seem to have a sort of a very similar weight so maybe I'll go in and I'll thicken up some not all of the lines I'll thicken up some of the lines so the the piece evolved again and I think, I think I am finally done. I really like the way this piece turned out. I like the way it looks now. So there you are, that's week two. And we'll see what, what, what I do next week for week three. And thanks for watching and I will see you again soon.